What if I told you you can expand your video beyond its borders, restyle it completely and control its motion all in one tool? I'm talking about the Van Vase video model. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use it on your machine. To fully understand the Van basics, you should watch this video here first, but make sure you come back afterwards. To follow along, head over to my Patreon where you can find the workflow and useful instructions accompanying this video. All for free, of course. Drag my Outpaint workflow in and then you should see this. It's pretty simple, really. All you have to do is upload your video with this button here and here you have to put in your Outpaint direction. In our case, I want to Outpaint 200 pixels to the left and 200 pixels to the right. Normally you would have to calculate your new output resolution by hand, but I took the liberty of doing that for you and feeding it into the Vantu video node here, because I found it very annoying. Up here you can find our good old model loader. So depending on if you're using the quantized GGUF version or the normal FP16 version, you can do both with the same workflow. You just need to connect the model to this LoRa node here. So depending on what you're using. The course with LoRa you see here is a helper LoRa that reduces steps significantly while maintaining the quality. Apart from that, you can find the usual text encoder and this VAE encoder. For the output, Paint to work properly, you would need to put in the original video prompt that you used. This will give you better consistency. As you can see here, we are using just three steps. That is due to the course with LoRa I showed you earlier. Here you can find the save video notes that will store the video on your hard drive. I would advise you to take a 16 FPS video because if you use more frames, it will take significantly longer. You can use my frame interpolation and upscale workflow from my last video. You will find it on Patreon as well. So for demonstration purposes, I'm going to use this video here. And now I drag in the original video. I drag it in and I copy the prompt from here and I head back to the workflow and put the prompt in here. I leave the negative prompt as is and yeah, I run the workflow. What you can see here is that it created an outpainting mask for each frame. So the gray area is the part that will be outpainted basically. And here's our result. It looks amazing. One Waze really outpainted her shoulders, they weren't visible in the original video. If this video helped you out and you don't want to miss anything in the future, make sure to subscribe to my channel and visit my Patreon. There's free stuff. Now I will show you how you can swap out characters or restyle your video entirely. We are basically using ControlNet for AI video. If you don't know what that is, I have several videos on my channel already for you to check out. To follow along, just drag my workflow in. First, we have our model loader. I put two model loaders in depending on your VRAM. You want to use either the GGUF or if you have more VRAM available, then use the FP16 because the outputs will be slightly better. Just make sure you connect the right one to the load LoRa node. Down here, we have the course with LoRa for one. This LoRa allows us to decrease the steps and therefore the render time while maintaining a good quality. Down here are our text encoder and our VAE. So to the right, you can find our prompt boxes and the usual VAN render setup. With the VAN vase video node, our case sampler and the node that saves out our video in the end. But here comes the interesting part. So now we give it an input video and also we give it a style reference or a character reference. When trying out these, make sure you don't overdo it. So to save render time, you could skip every other frame and then maybe interpolate it afterwards. If the first frames are boring, you can just skip them by setting this up here. So I'm not going to skip any frames, even though we could. 
And yeah, I'm using this reference image here. And yeah, make sure that you write in the prompt what you want to see. Female Grim Reaper driving a car. I get rid of the Warhammer and futuristic part. And yeah, so this should be it. We are going to use two control nets here or two preprocessor images. We are going to use the depth control net and we are going to use the open pose control net. And then we are going to combine them. This will give you the best output possible. You are free to use other control net models. For example, combine Kenny with open pose, but I can tell you the results will be less desirable. For rendering a video out, you should first try the control net. So basically what I'm going to do is I do a right click here. I say bypass group nodes. This way I can see what the control net models are doing here. So and if the output is bad, I don't waste my time in rendering. So I clicked run and now it takes quite some time. I put video combine nodes here so that we can see what it gets us. And yeah, we can see it as a video, not as images. It will take a while. So sometimes you need to download a model or a script. And yeah, just let it run through. For a better comparison, I moved the image here and scaled it up. So you can see it did a good job with the open pose, but it's not perfect. In some images, the person isn't recognized at all. But that's not a problem in my opinion. Same goes for the depth map. It did a great job. And this is our combined image. So it looks good in my opinion. In some cases, one of the control net models can come out too strong. In that case, just change the blend factor. So if I decrease it to let's say 0.2 and then I hit run again, then you can see the open post model is now the dominant one. And if I decrease it to let's say 0.75, then you will see that the open post is much more subtle compared to the other control net. Set it to 0.5 if you want both of these uh, to be equally strong. Let's go up here and let's reactivate by doing a right click and say set group nodes to always. And yeah, now we can render everything. I'm going to reset this to 0.4 and yeah, I click run. And it takes some time, so I'll see you after the generation. And this is our output video. You can see her hood is slightly influenced by the cap that the female driver here is wearing. But yeah, like I said, we could get a different results if we decrease this to 0.2, for example. Actually, let's do it. See you soon. So here you can see we have less influence of the depth map, but at the same time we have less movement. You need to keep this in mind when you play with these values here of the blend image. We could try to fix it with a prompt though. Female Green Reaper driving a car fast through a forest. There is moonlight visible behind the clouds. Okay, let's add cinematic lighting, highly detailed, hyper-realistic. Okay, and we're going to render this once more. I always say render, I mean generate, of course. Rendering is from the old worlds when you made 3D videos by putting 3D models in scenes. We don't do that anymore, <laughs> I guess. So as you can see here, we got more movement. We got the bright moon. We got a nice forest here. Yeah, everything's according to our prompt. And I also think we got more details into the image. Here are some more examples I made with the same workflow. For amazing AI videos, you need good reference images. And in this video, I will teach you how you can generate them.